So once again, mountain pose is where we start. Feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead. Lift up your toes, get those base of the toes really well connected. Spread the toes out as you put them down, no gripping, or that raises the base of your toes, gives you less support. Think about the arches lifting so that the whole bottom of your foot connects. And then line up your ankles, knees, hips, and shoulders. Arms relaxed at your sides. So again, you're connected down into the base of your feet, up through the bones so that they're supporting you and let your muscles relax. And just deep breaths. Remember the diaphragm drop, drops down so your lungs can expand. So let that happen, belly moving, don't constrict it. But do bring the bottom ribs in and up so the core connects and gives you a little bit of support along your spine. And then deep breaths, exhaling tension, and just bringing your awareness, your focus inward to your yoga frame of reference and allow your body to relax and your mind to focus inward. And just keep that yoga inward connection as we go through the practice. And remember, what's right for you is what you do. So we'll begin with our warm up. Inhaling, bring your arms out to shoulder level, stretch out through your fingertips, up through the crown. As you exhale, bring your hands to your heart, and elbows just a little back so you keep that chest open. Inhale, arms to the front, keep your shoulders down. And then as you exhale, bring your hands around behind, clasp the fingertips, lift your heart, and stretch through your spine. As you exhale, pivot over, and bring your hands up towards the ceiling, your chin in, your head down. And just take a moment letting that lower back begin stretching. It's always a little tight in the morning. So just release, kind of move your head around, let that neck have a little bit of release as well. And then with your knees a little bit bent, lift your ribs, drop your sitting bones, keep your chin in as you wind your spine slowly back up to standing and lift your heart toward the ceiling. Shoulders and shoulder blades down, hands toward the floor. Look up, head slightly back, and just stretch along the whole length of your body. And then as you inhale, come back upright. Exhale your hands back to your sides into mountain pose. Just take a moment, feeling your body, getting a little bit more stimulation along that spine this morning. And again, inhaling. Lift your arms to shoulder level, reaching out, palms towards the floor. As you exhale, bring your hands to your heart again. Inhale them all the way out to the front. And exhale behind you, clasping your fingers the opposite way, other finger outside. Lift your heart, stretch your head back, press your hands slightly down, get that heart nice and open. And again, pivot at the hips and come on over. So once again, bring your hands up as high as they want to go in the direction of your head and your head down as far as it wants to go toward your feet. Kind of pull in toward your thighs a little bit more if you like that stretch. And again, a couple breaths here, just relaxing, letting things begin stretching and lengthening through the whole back of your body. And then chin in, and once again, just wind your way along the spine slowly to the top and lift your heart. Lengthen through the back of your body as well as the front as you come into that upper body for your back bend. And then inhale to the top, release your arms. And just take a moment feeling once again what's happening internally, remembering. Your yoga perspective is that internal awareness. So next is lateral side-to-side -side motion. Again, arms come up to shoulder level, stretching out. This time, turn your palms towards the ceiling. Bring your arms right over your shoulders. And then clasp your hands, turn them around, clasp the palms together, and pull your arms back by your ears. Sitting bones and shoulder blades toward the floor, crown reaching way up, and without twisting, lean to the side, getting a little bit of stretching arch. Push the foot your knees away from down, reach out through your head and your hands, and breathe into that side of your body. Stretching Inhale back to the center, switch your hands.
arms around so the other one's in front. And pull your arms back again by your ears. Sitting bones toward the floor, crown high. Exhale and lean to the other side. Again, making sure you don't bring that top shoulder forward. Foot down, arms and head reaching to the side. Ribs open. Breathe and stretch. And again, inhale upright. And as you exhale, release back to mountain pose. And just feel the sides of your body and how that spine warms up in a slightly different direction. And of course, our fifth and sixth directions are our two twist positions. So we're going to lengthen the spine throughout the twist. So sitting bones, tailbone down, crown and base of the skull up, lengthening through the spine all the time. Inhale, arms out to the side, palms toward the ceiling. And again, bring your arms right above your shoulder, close your elbows. So once more, arms are along your ears, sitting bones toward the floor, crown reaching up to that spine, and exhale to either side. Keep your knees a little bent, stretch up as you breathe in, and as you exhale, pivot in the twist, and come into the forward bend in your twist position. See if you can keep the weight on both feet evenly while you're in the twist forward bend and just observe how your body is maybe a little different in this position. And then keeping on your ears and staying in your twist, slowly unwind your way back up, look toward the ceiling, pull your elbows back, heart high, gentle on your low back while you're still twisted going into this back bend. So keep breathing, keep stretching your spine. And then inhale, Go back to the center, switch your arms around so things stay balanced. And again, sink into both feet evenly and stretch. Exhale and twist the other side. One more lengthening, breathing in. And when you're ready, exhale and pivot over. And again, just deepen into your forward bend on this side. Allowing your spine to get that nice twist through it as you're in this forward bend. And then one more time, work your way up just slowly in your twist. Come to the top, keep your arms by your ears, pulling your elbows and head back as you look up. Getting that upper body into a little back bend more than your lower back. And one more time, inhale to the top. Bring your arms up. You can keep your arms next to your ears as you pivot at your hips, pivoting forward. Get kind of parallel to the floor. See how that's working today. Shoulder blades toward your waist. And then just drop in a rag doll hanging. Chin tucked in, sitting bones lifting for those hamstrings. So kneecaps toward your thighs. Tighten the top of your thighs a little bit if you want to. Stretch the back of your legs a little bit more. Just breathe and relax. If you like the stretch and want a little more in your low back, you can bring your hands behind your legs or ankles and pull in a little bit more. And then exhale, arms back to the center ragdoll and just let them hang as you one more time, slowly wind your way back all the way up into mountain pose. So just a good warm up for your spine. You can do that every day and get a little bit more flexibility through your whole body. Take a moment and breathe. We're gonna turn the feet just a little bit out from the thigh. So your whole leg is turning open and your knees still go the direction your toes are. And then we're gonna bend the knees a little bit toward the toes, not beyond. Put your hands right above your knees on your thighs and don't really press into them, just kind of position that way. And we're gonna do a little pelvic tilt. So the sitting bones go back as the chest comes forward. So you're coming into a bit of a back bend. And then sitting bones round down, ribs go in, chin and chest forward into that forward bend. And your knees don't move. So we're just moving through the pelvis, getting the hips a little bit warmed up. 
So into the backward bend and into the forward bend, just following your breath, inhaling, bringing the chest forward and the hips back, and exhaling, sitting bones down and forward, rounding into that C-shaped forward bend. And just take a few times to do that, getting that hip pelvic area opening and flowing a little bit more effectively. So whoever it was that said a little shoulder work today, you can focus a little bit more up through that shoulder area, making sure you're opening across the heart and chest, pulling those shoulders back as you go into the back bend, and then rounding them a little bit forward as you go into the forward bend. And then as you come up, come back into mountain pose and just take a moment as you settle back into mountain pose to focus through that pelvic area, noticing it's a little bit warmer. And if you're working your shoulders particularly, kind of notice that area as well. So take a breath, exhale tension, and just sink down into your feet effectively up through the crown. So we're gonna do another hip warm up. And as we do this one, if you've got knee issues, it can be a little bit knee intensive. So just minimize and be gentle. We're gonna again, turn the toes just slightly out, turning from the hips, whole leg moving out into that open position with the knees going towards the toes. So first we're gonna just stand upright in this position, getting situated, feel that hip and pelvic area kind of sitting bones down so that whole pelvic area stays open. And then focusing through the hips and that pelvic center right in the middle of your lower, beneath your navel area. Focus there, getting that energy stimulated into that pelvic center. So we're gonna bring the hands first to the knees as you bend your knees just a little bit more. And then we're gonna stand upright, hands to your hips. And then as you exhale again, bend the knees, and then inhale and stand up. Now, as we do this, if your knees are challenged, stay here. If your knees aren't challenged and you want a little bit more rigor, we're gonna go next time all the way to the floor. So exhaling, come all the way down as far as you want toward the floor, knees bending, but not beyond your toes. So those hips really go back a little bit. And then again, as you inhale, come on up. Now this is one of those kundalini exercises. So if you wanna be a kundalini, you can do this 108 times. And they do it very fast and emphatically. So you can do that if that works for your body, exhaling down and inhaling up. And if you're not a kundalini person, you can continue to do it slowly. So just inhaling up, exhaling down, continuing to move, getting those knees and hips a little bit more flexible breathing and relaxing through whatever muscles seem to be tight, wherever they may be in your body this morning. Breathing and moving at your own pace. And you can do it like a choo-choo train, getting faster and faster as you move, or you can just do it slowly, whatever's right for your body, because remember, Yoga is a personal practice. And then as you come back up to standing, turn your feet back into mountain pose, release your arms, take a moment feeling a little bit more energized, a little bit more open through that hip and pelvic area. And as you breathe, just focus inward. Notice how your body responds to the stimulation. So with that hip and pelvic area a little bit more warmed up, we're gonna go and practice a lunge position. So stand at the front of your mat in mountain pose. Bring your hands to your heart. Look at your fingertips and inhale them toward the ceiling. As you extend your arms up, just keep gazing toward your thumbs. If you like that upper body back bend, you can bring the thumbs back a little bit, lifting your heart a little bit further. And then as you exhale, keep looking at your hands as you bring them toward your heart. 
and then pivot at your hips and move into your ragdoll forward bend position. Just hang there for a moment, lifting your sitting bones, letting that back of your leg get a nice stretch as much as you'd like. And then bring your hands, palms under your knees onto your shins. Get that halfway up stretch. So as much as possible, get your back nice and flat, parallel to the floor. So chin maybe a little bit forward, chest down toward the floor. And then as you exhale, we're gonna bend the knees and bring the hands under your shoulders down to the floor. Now, if you're not quite reaching the floor comfortably, you can use those books or blocks to prop your hands up, lifting the floor a little bit higher. And then we're gonna go into a lunge position with the right foot. So step your right foot a good step back. So really long step. Now positioning is really important, remember, in the lunge position. So you want your knee right above your ankle on that front leg. Spread out through the base of the toes, get that whole foot supporting you well. You can be on your fingertips, you can be on your palms, just depends on how long your arms are and what's comfortable for you. The base of the toes, not the toes themselves, are supporting that back leg, and you're pushing back through the heel, letting that hip come down toward the floor so that both hip bones are facing down evenly. So just as much as possible, ankle, knee, hip, and shoulder all line up in a nice straight line. And then push off that back foot, step back forward into ragdoll, palms together, inhaling, and again, slowly come back up, hands to your heart, looking at your hands, extend them up to the ceiling. And again, keep looking at your hands. If you like that upper body back bend, you can come with the hands a little further, lifting your heart. And then one more time, exhaling, hands to your chest, and then pivoting over, exhaling all the way down into your forward bend. Take a moment and ragdoll, just hang there, however it feels comfortable, feeling that release through the hips we just stretched a little bit. And then sliding your hands up, straightening your back, getting that nice flat back halfway up stretch, lengthening through your spine. Exhale, bend your knees a little bit, bring your hands down to the mat under your shoulders. That should be next to your little toe. And then stepping the left foot back, we're gonna go into lunge again on the other side. Same thing, check that knee. That knee should be pointing toward your second toe, right above your ankle, so the kneecap is facing the front. Both hip bones even toward the floor, base of the toes supporting you behind. Exhale, just let the hips relax down toward the floor, and heel, knee, hip, shoulder, everything lining up evenly chest toward the front. And then one more time, we're gonna push off that back foot, back into your ragdoll, release that hip a little bit as you stay exhaling forward. And then on the inhalation, palms together, inhaling, coming back up into mountain pose. Now, if that position was enough for you and you got a good stretch through that hip and pelvis, Stick with that one. We're gonna go a little bit further to stretch that hip flexor on the front of your legs this time. So it's essentially the same lunge position we're gonna start in, and then we're going to just drop a little deeper into it. So again, mountain pose, looking at your hands, inhale and extend up toward the ceiling. Pull into the little back bend if you like it, and then exhaling once again, hands to your heart, and pivot over into ragdoll. Settle into your forward bend. Slide those hands up under your knees on your shins. Press in, elbows straight, back flat. And then exhaling, knees bent, hands to the floor or the book or the block. Take a moment there. Situate your body evenly to the front. And then again, right foot a big step back. Base of the toes supporting you. Knee above the ankle, toes straight ahead. Get those hips even toward the floor. 
chest toward the front. You can look up a little bit if you'd like. Stay here if this is where you want to be. Or we're going to bring the top of the knee, not the kneecap itself, down to the floor. So bring lowering that back leg down and then slide the toes back maybe a little further. And feel that hip flexor on that extended back leg stretching a little bit more. Stay here if that's good for you. Or if you want a little bit more stretch, you can bring your hand up to that front knee and bring your upper body up and just continue sinking through that hip joint. So feel that hip flexor, let it relax so it can stretch. And if you want, you can rotate your face up to the ceiling with the chest forward a little bit and get a little bit more of that whole front of your body stretching. And then exhaling, we're going to bring the hands back under your shoulders. Tuck the toes behind you under and lift only the knee, not the hip, as you press back through that back heel. So maybe a little bit deeper into that lunge. And then press off the back foot. Step forward into your rag doll. Just a moment to release that hip joint and let that stretch relax. Palms together, inhaling. And again, rise up, hands to your heart, and then looking at them, continue towards the ceiling. So as you extend those arms up, keep looking at the thumbs, stay there, or go into that upper body back bend a little bit more. And exhale, hands to your chest, and pivot on over, and relax into ragdoll. Hands up onto your shins, get that nice straight back, stretch, and then bending your knees, exhale the hands under your shoulders, and of course, left foot into lunge. So again, get your positioning first, knee and ankle, checking those hips, pressing into the base of your toes behind you. Stay there, relax, or bring the top of the knee, not the kneecap itself, to the floor. You can always pad under that back knee if you need to, if that feels uncomfortable for you. So take a moment, find your position, stay there if that's good for you, or bring your hands to that front knee and allow yourself to sink a little deeper into that hip. Again, stay there or chest forward, rotating and looking a little further up getting that upper body into a little more back bend, lengthening a little bit more through that hip flexor side on the left. Take a moment and breathe. Sink those hips down, just relaxing. And when you're ready, looking forward, exhaling the hands back to the mat, come again into your lunge position, tucking the toes under, going onto the base of the toes, pressing back through that heel behind you, keeping the hip low, as you raise the knee and press forward with that body into ragdoll, palms together, inhaling slowly back into mountain pose at the front of your mat. Take a moment and breathe, lengthen through your spine. Just take a moment to feel your body, especially through that hip and pelvic area, and allow yourself to relax. And then bring your arms out to the side, palms toward the ceiling, overhead, looking up. Exhale all the way down into ragdoll. And we're going to come all the way to the mat into child's pose. So just hips back onto your heels, forehead down toward the floor, hands next to your sides, palms up, and just take a moment to relax in connection to that earth center beneath you. So remember, padding wherever you need it. Block under your forehead if you're not feeling comfortable with that head going toward the front. And then inhaling, sit up on your heels, bring the legs out in front into staff position. So get those sitting bones evenly connected, knees up, toes up, and shoulders evenly facing the front. 
So just take a moment to get those ribs in and up, core activated. And then as you exhale, slowly roll back all the way down onto the mat on your back. So as you come onto your back, just relax the shoulders down, palms up toward the ceiling, move back and forth on that lower back area, getting comfortable through the sacrum. And then bend your knees and bring the heels in toward your hips. Kind of lengthen through your spine so that whole back can press down to the mat and bring your arms out to T position straight out from your body. So keep pressing down through that lower back and lift your feet off the floor so your knees are right above your hips. Take a moment to breathe. You can have your hands palms up or palms down. It's your choice for this twist. So remember, sitting bones one way, crown reaching the other way, really lengthening through your spine. And then exhale, bring your knees to one side and turn your head to look toward that opposite arm. So coming into your twist, just relax. If your knees don't go to the floor, you can bring your feet down for a little support or you can put a block or blanket under your knees to give you a little bit less stress and strain through that twist. If your knees are all the way down and you love it, you can bring your knees a little further toward your elbow on that side and that gives you a little bit more stretch and opening through that lower back while it's twisted. Your choice, how far you go. So the more your knees go to the floor, that's your lower back in the twist. The more your shoulders and shoulder blades stay on the floor, that's your middle back in the twist. <clears throat> and the more your head turns toward that arm behind you, that's your neck and shoulder in the twist. So do what's right for your body. And remember, if you've got any back issues, just minimize as you go into the twist position. When you're ready to release, heels go back toward your hips and roll your body back onto the back, allowing your knees again to be above the hips. You can bring your feet to the floor if you want a moment to release. And we're going to, of course, balance the body and twist toward the opposite side. So again, palms up or down with the hands right at shoulder level. Press the back down, just gently lengthen through the spine, up through the crown, and then bring the knees to the opposite side, turning your head toward that arm behind you. Again, allow your body just to relax into that position as much as it wants to, keeping the knees down or the feet down or propping things up as you need to. Just take a moment and breathe. Relaxing into that position, getting those shoulders and shoulder blades as much down, head turning, and knees toward the floor. If they're all the way down and you like that extra, you can always, after you've stretched a bit, get a little bit more stretch by bringing the knees toward the elbow a little bit further. Your choice. Go where your body needs to go for this twist. Exhale and relax. And Deepen as much into the twist as your body allows. When you're ready to release, again, the heels come toward your hips and rolling onto your back. Get everything resituated. Exhale those feet down and slide the feet to the end of the mat. Get ready for our relaxation, allowing your body to come into corpse position. If your lower back feels strained, feel free to prop up your knees with something or just bend them and lean them slightly toward each other, getting a little bit of release through your lower back. Hands, palms up slightly away from your sides, giving yourself a little bit of sinking through the shoulders to open that heart a little bit more as you come into your corpse position for the relaxation. Deep breaths just releasing any parts of your body that might be a little bit tense and tight this morning. So scanning through your legs and hips, especially through that pelvis, relaxing through those hip flexors we stretched earlier. 
arms and hands releasing, shoulders just sinking down into that surface beneath you, letting the heart be open and the body relaxing through the torso. Kind of move your neck back and forth as you close your eyes and focus inward, allowing your whole body just to release down into that surface beneath you, sinking into Mother Earth's embrace letting her support you as she does every day. Deep breaths, just letting your body go and releasing awareness from all the parts of your body, just letting your body sink. And as you turn your awareness inward, those thoughts will keep coming. It's the job of your mind to produce those thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. At this moment, there's no need to think of the past, no need to anticipate the future. Just let the thoughts drift in and out as easily as your breath. As your body relaxes and your mind just begins to drift, allow your awareness to release both your body and your mind. And allow that awareness to turn inward. And follow the peace within, deep into that inner core, letting the peace grow in your body, grow in your mind, filling your being with peace. And if you'd like to continue letting your cellular memory and synaptic connections from your yoga practice build, feel free to stay in your relaxation. Otherwise, begin breathing a little bit more deeply, drawing energy and awareness back to the room, back to your body, filling your breath <clears throat> with energy, <clears throat> allowing your body to begin moving. Fingers and toes, arms and hands, as you become ready, stretching more fully as you breathe more deeply. And when you're ready for that final yoga hug of appreciation, press your back down to the mat, draw your knees up toward your heart, wrap your arms around, let your body know you appreciate its work in yoga today and the work it does for you every day. And when you've had enough hug and appreciation, release your hands, roll to the side, and allow yourself to gently come back to a seated position. And just focus inward a moment, feeling that calmness and peace from your yoga practice. Thanks for joining me.